Hey everyone, this is Adam. And this is Mendel. And you are listening to Future Ecologies, the show about the shape of our world told through ecology, design, and sound. So it's only been a week since we released our first episode, and we just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of our listeners, subscribers, everybody who's rated and reviewed the podcast. It makes a huge difference in getting it out to more listeners. We appreciate you so much. We want this podcast to grow organically, and that essentially just means that you have to help us spread it around and give it to people who you think might be interested in it. And uh, I'll just reiterate that those ratings and reviews, especially on iTunes, but even on the other platforms of which there are a number, if we are not on your platform, please let us know. (laughs) We're trying to get on them all, but there are a lot. Um, all, All of those help us so much to spread the word about this podcast. So thank you. Yeah. You may have noticed that we're not running ads. Uh, we are taking little breaks between the segments, but it is our preference to not advertise to you. Uh, and the way that we would we assume, like... We assume that's your preference too. <laughs> yeah. Um, the way that we would ideally like to support this podcast is directly from the people who like what we're throwing down. So we've created a Patreon page uh, through which people can support us with a small monthly donation. Where Where is that? That's at patreon.com slash future ecologies. Uh, and if you do so, we would love to reward you with some special little treats. Uh, to give you a taste, one of them is the episode that's about to follow. Right. Um, so Future Ecologies will be released every other Wednesday. So we have a full-length episode uh, in our normal feed every other Wednesday. But in between, on the off Wednesdays, we'll have little mini episodes for our supporters. And they'll be on all sorts of different things. But for this particular week, we're going to share with you the first in a mini series that we're doing called Meet Your Future Jellyfish Overlords featuring Dr. Lisa Ann Gershwin, an internationally renowned jellyfish expert. Without further ado, we present to you Aurelia Labiata, and we hope you enjoy it. (laughs) So, um, but can I just tell one of my favorite jellyfish impact stories from the Pacific Coast? It's time to be Your jellyfish overlords. (laughs) Today's species, Aurelia labiata, Pacific moon jellyfish. Jellyfish rule. They absolutely rule the world in this story. Way back a trillion years ago, when I was, well, trying to find myself. I was a late teenager, you know, just in that sort of like pondering the meaning of life, you know, in that existential place, you know. And so I somehow managed to join an anti-nuclear protest. Of course, why wouldn't you, you know? And um, so I went to uh, the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant near San Luis Obispo, um, you know, kind of in central California. You're laughing. You know the story. <laughs> As it so happens, I do know parts of this story. It all takes place in September 1981. Plant officials have painted a blue line at the entrance. For police and protesters, it has become the demarcation between free speech and almost certainly another arrest. I, I, I can't remember. I think I was like 18 or something, you know. Um, there I am with, uh, you know, thousands of other people in the largest act of civil disobedience that had ever happened in America to that time. And 1,900 of us got arrested on purpose in peaceful protest, you know, to make a statement. This kid might enjoy your effort to deny the license to Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. And, you know, it was a good thing to do. I stand by it. I think it was important. We were not able to stop it from powering up, and we failed. Citizens groups failed in their latest attempts to get the courts to prevent the startup of California's Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. But we got a lot of attention to the point we were trying to make. And so I think it was good in that respect, but we failed. In uh, the early 90s, 
I was working with jellyfish completely unrelated to Diablo Canyon, had nothing to do with nuclear power, and anyway, I started volunteering at the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium in San Pedro, Los Angeles. I was a volunteer aquarist, feeding and cleaning and helping out with the jellyfish. And I noticed that one of the species I was working with, the one I was doing the most work with actually, um, didn't seem to be the species that it was supposed to be. Like it looked really different. You know, its, its features and its structures were different. And I kept thinking, there's something different about this. I don't know why it's supposed to, like it's, it's the same as that in its name, but it doesn't look the same. So see, I was a budding taxonomist and I didn't even know it, but the typical person would look at a moon jelly, Aurelia, and you know, they all look the same, you know. Um, to a taxonomist like me, you go, oh, well, that's different because it's got that, it's got that, it's got that. But you know, um, birds or worms or things like that, it would be the same. I look at a bird and I go, oh, look, a bird but somebody who knows birds really well would go, oh, that's a blah, 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 kind of bird. I started doing a little bit of research on the history of the species. And what I found was that the one that I was working with was not the same. It was a different species, but it had been named and classified 175 years earlier as a different species and promptly ignored and ignored ever since. And so in a technical publication, uh, you know, a scientific publication that was peer reviewed, I revalidated the old species, Aurelia labiata, and I gave it its true identity back. So that was good, you know, I was proud of that work and it was an interesting species and I'm still very fond of Aurelia labiata. And it's the common moon jelly all up and down the Pacific coast of North America. You've almost certainly seen this species or one of its relatives before. It's probably even what you think of when you picture a jellyfish in your mind. Moon jellyfish are common in coastal waters throughout the world. This one is specific to the Pacific coast. They have four horseshoe-shaped markings at the apex of the bell. These are actually their gonads, their reproductive organs. So I moved on and eventually I went to Australia and I was living and working in Australia. And one morning in 2008, I opened up the morning paper. There I am with my coffee and my porridge and, you know, I'm sorry, oatmeal. <laughs> and, you know, sorry, a little bit too much Australian there. <laughs> And oh my God, I nearly choked on my coffee. Um, here was this story about Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant sucked in thousands and thousands of Aurelia labiata and it shut down. The, the nuclear plant got shut down for three days because of jellyfish. And it was my baby that shut down my power plant. Well, not my power plant. I mean, PG&E and the people of California own the power plant. But you know, it wasn't just any power plant. It was that power plant. And it wasn't just any jellyfish. It was that jellyfish. And I just thought, what are the odds? You know, the jellyfish were able to accomplish what decades of activists could not accomplish, including me. And yet, my jellyfish, my babies, did my bidding in the most elegant of ways. <laughs> Imagine how proud I am. <laughs> This mini-episode of Future Ecologies was produced by myself, Adam Huggins. It features Lisa Ann Gershwin, the author of Stung on Jellyfish Blooms and the Future of the Ocean, and also Jellyfish, A Natural History, in which you can find out more about these delightful creatures. Music was provided by Speshpep. Devour more of their offerings at speshpep.bandcamp.com. This is only the first episode of 14 in our series, It's Time to Meet Your Future Jellyfish Overlords, which is only available to our Patreon subscribers. To become one, go to patreon.com slash futureecologies. Thanks for listening, and thanks for supporting us. All of you, why